Welcome. In this exciting lesson, we will unpack all the information contained within a balanced chemical equation. Specifically, we will learn a fundamental chemistry skill called stoichiometry, which takes the principles of dimensional analysis and combines them with a framework commonly called the mole bridge. Stoichiometry is a funny little word, but a relatively straightforward concept. Stoichiometry is the chemical version of asking the question, if I have this many apples, how much apple pie can I make? For example, a chemist might want to mix iron metal and hydrochloric acid together to make hydrogen gas, according to the reaction shown. If this chemist has 235 grams of iron, she might want to know, how many grams of hydrogen can I make? She might also want to know, how many grams of hydrochloric acid will I need? Stoichiometry is the mathematical process used to answer these questions and more. Stoichiometry is a series of conversions. In other words, to do stoichiometry, you have to do the dimensional analysis dance. The common stoichiometry roadmap goes as follows. We will be given the grams of one substance in a chemical reaction. We will then use the molar mass to convert to moles of that substance. Then we'll use the chemical equation like a recipe, which tells us the relationship between moles of each substance in a reaction. This is called the mole ratio, and it converts from moles of the starting substance to moles of the target substance. Lastly, we'll use the molar mass of the target substance to convert to grams of that substance. Before we can do any kind of dimensional analysis dance, we need a balanced chemical equation. The balanced chemical equation is the starting point of every stoichiometry problem. Only a fool would attempt to start a stoic problem without writing out a balanced chemical equation. The technique I just described is often referred to as a mole bridge because we use moles to go from the starting point to the ending point. And I have just one problem with that. The, the mole, the animal, is literally only known for one, for one thing. It's not known for building bridges. So I would like to teach you about the far superior and more biologically factual mole tunnel. You're going to need a sheet of paper. Okay, so reserve the top three lines of your paper like this. The top line will be where you write the balanced chemical equation, which is the starting point for every stoichiometry problem. The second line is where you will write the measured amounts. Right now, all our measured amounts will be in grams, but later in the term, we will include other ways to measure amounts. The bottom line is for moles and for moles only. Moles are the only way we can convert between one reactant and another. The moles go in the tunnel. Let's try it out. So 21 grams of magnesium burn in air. How many grams of magnesium oxide are formed? The top line is always reserved for the balanced chemical equation. The phrase magnesium burns means magnesium combines with oxygen. Remember, oxygen is a Brinkelhoff diatomic. You will also need to know the correct formula for magnesium oxide, which is MgO. In order for this equation to be balanced, both magnesium and magnesium oxide need a two in front of them. Next, we will input any known amounts into the correct place on this diagram. For this problem, we have 21 grams of magnesium, which I put in line two, underneath magnesium. Now we need to plot a course. The problem asks us to find grams of magnesium oxide. So I've circled the space underneath magnesium oxide in line two. I'm also going to add big imposing walls here in line two, although you don't have to do this on your own paper. They symbolize the fact that we can't convert directly from grams of magnesium to grams of magnesium oxide. Instead, we need to use moles to dig a tunnel underneath those walls. 
First, we'll convert to moles of magnesium using magnesium's molar mass. Then we'll convert to moles of magnesium oxide using the mole ratio from the balanced equation. Lastly, we'll dig back up to line two using the molar mass of magnesium oxide. Each arrow symbolizes a conversion factor. So we'll need three total conversion factors to solve this stoichiometry problem. Here's the math, which I've color coded. We start with 21 grams of magnesium and convert it to moles using the molar mass as the conversion factor. Take note of how the units cancel. 24.3 grams of magnesium is on the bottom and one mole of magnesium is on the top. If we stopped our calculation right now, we'd have merely converted to moles of magnesium, but we are not stopping now. Next, we'll use the mole ratio to convert from magnesium to magnesium oxide. Looking at our chemical equation, it takes two moles of magnesium to form two moles of magnesium oxide. This step is why the balanced chemical equation is essential to stoichiometry. If we stopped our calculation right here, we would have converted to moles of magnesium oxide, but we're not done yet. Lastly, we'll use the molar mass of magnesium oxide to convert from moles to grams. Plugging it into our calculator will give us the answer. Notice that unit cancellation in the equation tells us the story of our conversion steps. All right, now let's ask a different question. How many grams of oxygen are required to burn 21 grams of magnesium? The first conversion step will be the same, but pause the video and see if you can fill in the rest. To get the answer to this problem, we convert it in this order. First, convert grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium using the molar mass. Next, convert moles of magnesium to moles of oxygen using the mole ratio. Notice the mole ratio is different than in the last example because the coefficients of the substances we're interested in are different. Lastly, use the molar mass of oxygen to convert to grams of oxygen. Remember, oxygen is a diatomic molecule. Its molar mass is 32 grams per mole. And with that, you are a true mole chemist. Remember, you cannot convert directly from grams to grams. You have to convert through the mole tunnel.